life-threatening problems can arise within seconds when a temporary pacemaker stops working. This is why it's important that doctors and nurses in the ICU understand these issues and can treat them as quickly as possible. This video will walk you through the common and important issues with temporary pacemakers and what to do about them in an emergency. My name is Josh McClarty and I'm an ICU registrar based in Melbourne. I'm part of a team making videos to help ICU clinicians understand difficult topics in intensive care. This video is possible due to funding made available by the Australian and New Zealand Intensive Care Foundation. You can check out their excellent work through the link in the description. This video is part of a series on temporary pacemakers in the ICU. Check out the videos on pacing thresholds, checks and sensitivity here. Today I'm going to take you through some of the most important problems that we see with temporary pacemakers and the causes for each of them. We can break pacemaker issues down into number one, problems with pacing and capture, number two, problems with sensing, number three, pacemaker dysrhythmias, and number four, unusual but normal pacemaker behaviours. The first two are relatively straightforward once you have a handle on the basics of pacing, and we'll cover both of these in this video. The second two are a bit more complicated, they only happen in dual chamber pacing and they need a bit more explanation, so we'll cover those in the next video in the series. So first up are problems with pacing and capture, and these can be one of two possibilities. Either the pulse generator fails to produce an impulse that reaches the heart, which is also known as output failure or failure to pace, or the impulses from the pulse generator aren't producing capture of the heart, that is failure to capture. Let's start with failure to pace. On the monitor, we won't see pacing spikes at all, and we will see the patient's underlying cardiac rhythm. This can be caused by displaced or damaged leads anywhere from the heart to the pulse generator, battery failure, or rarely generator failure. When troubleshooting this, consider ensuring the pulse generator is on and has adequate battery, check the lead connections from the pulse generator all the way back to the patient, and consider changing the pulse generator. Now let's look at failure to capture. The impulse is reaching the myocardium, but not producing capture. This can happen for both the atrial and ventricular leads. On the monitor, we will see pacing spikes that aren't followed by a P-wave or QRS complex, and we'll see the patient's underlying rhythm. This can happen intermittently, which is called intermittent failure to capture. The mechanism behind failure to capture is usually changing thresholds of the myocardium, which can be due to many factors like change in electrolyte levels, acidosis, hypoxia, ischemia, and antiarrhythmic drugs. Dislodged leads can also cause failure to capture as the impulse reaches the end of the pacing wire but isn't transferred to the myocardium. When troubleshooting this, consider immediately turning the output up until capture is regained, then performing a pacing check if the patient is stable. Further investigation should then be done looking for the cause. In an emergency, remember the pulse generator has a button for emergency pacing. This is the DOO button at the top. This switches to asynchronous pacing and turns the output up to maximum. It's a good idea to press this if the pacing fails and the patient becomes unstable. For both failure to pace and failure to capture, the patient may need alternative pacing while you fix the issue. This can be either unipolar pacing using a skin or subcutaneous lead, or transcutaneous or transvenous pacing. The second kind of pacemaker problems are problems with sensing. We can break this further into number one, over sensing, and number two, under sensing. Check out our video on sensitivity for more background on what these terms mean. With over sensing, the pacemaker senses signals that aren't cardiac activity and inhibits the output. The other signals can be muscle potentials from the pectoral muscles or interference. Oversensing usually happens because the sensitivity is set incorrectly, that is, it's too sensitive. On the monitor, this can look like failure to pace with no pacing spikes, or there might be an occasional pacing spike that hasn't been inhibited. You can tell the difference from failure to pace by looking at the pulse generator. With oversensing, the sensing light will be flashing out of sync with the QRS complexes and usually flashing very quickly. In failure to pace, neither light will be flashing. When troubleshooting this, if the patient is stable, perform a pacing check and set the sensitivity appropriately, that is make it less sensitive. If the patient is unstable, switch to an asynchronous mode which will disable sensing and ensure the patient gets paced. Then perform a pacing check once the patient is stable. With under sensing, 
the pacemaker isn't able to sense the electrical activity of the heart and will pace inappropriately. This is usually because the sensitivity is set incorrectly. In this case, it's not sensitive enough. On the monitor, this will look like pacing spikes at inappropriate times, including just after an intrinsic P wave or QRS complex. This is dangerous as it can cause R on T and ventricular fibrillation. When troubleshooting this, perform a pacing check and set the sensitivity appropriately, that is, make it more sensitive. In this video, we've talked about some of the more basic reasons that pacemakers fail. Join me next time to discuss the more complex complications of pacing. In the meanwhile, check out our other videos focused on ICU education here. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more great educational content.